We are making hair, yeah! We're gonna groom, stroke, cut and comb the fur on our lovely friend here and use some wind and other effects to blow some snow into that thick coat. All right, if you wanna make hair in Blender, you will first need something to put the hair on. However, we will be grooming hair on a creature, so I created a little sketch of this Arctic monkey. If you have a reference like this, you can simply just drag and drop it into Blender, and then you can head over to the image settings and reduce the opacity. Neat. Now we could sculpt this creature from the ground up, which is what I would recommend if you are new to sculpting. However, sometimes you can save a lot of time by starting from a base model. So I brought in an old friend for my tutorial on creature concept art in Blender. If you want to learn more about sculpting and creating creatures in Blender, I recommend checking that one out. All right, the great thing with this base is that we already have some muscle definition and limbs, so we can just stretch and mold this creature into our monkey friend. This should be fairly easy with the reference right there to line everything up. Also, because we're covering everything with hair, we don't have to sculpt that much detail on the creature. Also, an important note, we're doing everything in Blender 3.00 Alpha. So if you head to Preferences, Interface and turn on Developer Extras, then head to Experimental and turn on the Sculpt Vertex Color feature, we can now paint some color on our monkey, which we can use later on to color the hair as well. Yeah, that, that part won't need that much hair so red. Also, I really want to be able to pose my creature afterwards, so I'm going to create a quick, simple rig for it. And if you want to do this properly, you should really create some proper topology. But for me, this will be fine, and now it can move. But the rig is a bit sluggish because of the high density of the model, but a quick way to reduce the density is to decimate the mesh itself. Just add a decimate modifier, reduce the ratio, and apply it. Boom! And our rig still works, and it's much faster now. Double boom! All right, with that done, it's time for the hair. Select your model and head over to the particles. Create a new particle system and set it to hair. And done, that's it. Thank you so much for watching, and no. First off, the base hair is a bit too long, so we can take it down a notch. That's a bit better. The hairs we're creating here are more like guides for the actual fur to come. And currently we have a thousand of them, but I want to reduce that to about half. When you have a hair system on your model, you get this new mode available called particle edit mode. In this mode, we can actually start grooming our fur by just stroking the hairs down. But with such few hairs, it's not the most satisfying result. What we can do on top is to create some interpolated hairs. Ooh, fancy. Head over to the hair system, go to children and set it to interpolated. Then if you switch over to object mode, you can now see the result. Blender has gone ahead and placed new hairs in between the guide hairs we created. Wonderful! Then you can just increase the display amount and get even more hairs. Also, play with your matcaps a bit to get a better viewing of your hair strands. We do have one problem though. Hairy feet. Well, more hairy than we would like. Now we could grab the cut tool and start cutting the hairs away, but there's a better way. Hide the hair system and jump into weight painting. And now you can see a red foot. Well, that's just one of the vertex groups from our rig. What we're gonna do is to create a new vertex group to paint on. Inside this group, we will paint with full weight where we don't want any hairs. Feet, hands, the face, and yeah, the, the red thing. So red. Then you can head back to your hair system and unhide the hair. Go down to vertex groups and select your group under density. And that's the opposite of what we want, but you can just hit the little invert button next to the group and boom. Now we can continue grooming our ape. Also, the rig totally still works with the hair. Amazing. Grooming hair is tricky though, it's really its own skill and it takes time to get right, so just play around with it. If you find hairless patches here and there, just grab the add hair tool, set it to interpolate and just put more in. Simple. Also, I think it would be nice if we gave our fur some color, so we can just create a material for our body with the sculpt vertex colors and yeah, no, that's not what I want. So because we are in 3.00 alpha, the sculpt vertex colors don't work with the hair yet. So we need to convert the colors to normal vertex colors. Go to your model, sculpt mode, vertex colors, and hit store sculpt vertex colors. Then go back to preferences and turn off sculpt vertex colors so we can start using the normal vertex colors again. Now you can use the vertex colors to color the hair itself again. And just remember to brighten it up a bit because it's gonna be a little bit dark. Now this method is not ideal, but hopefully it'll be fixed soon. Also create a secondary material on your model for the hair itself and select that material instead under the rendered option in the hair system. It gives more control later. And with the color, you can keep grooming the fur. However, wouldn't it be nice if you could see the final hair while grooming? Well, under the tool settings for the comb brush, you can turn on children. Boom, now you can groom as if though it was a real creature. Just be careful with that area. 
so red. Also, if you want to get really fancy, you can start playing with some of the other detailing features in the hair system, like clumping and other noises. Just, um, you know, don't go crazy. It can get out of hand pretty fast. You know what? Screw that. Let's go crazy. Sometimes layering several hair systems makes it even better. I created a bunch of smaller curly hairs on different parts of the body to give some variation, but we can go even further. <laughs> further. <laughs> Fur. Bring out a wind force field. Our ape is now a fashion model. Give the ape a collider, turn on hair dynamics and watch the hair blow in the wind. Awesome. Also adding a turbulent noise can do some really funky stuff. I'm loving this far too much. It's, it's awesome. Let's also do a quick pose for the creature. And we can still continue adjusting the hair a little bit by combing it back and forth. Just not there. Let's adjust the color of the hair a bit. If you create a hair info node, we can get all these neat properties to modify the look of the hair. Wait, there's even more. Create a little white blob. Then on it, add the modifier particle instance. And for the target object, select the monkey and the hair particle system. Now the white blobs follow the hairs. Then select create a long path and reset the position of the blob to the center. Turn on children, reduce the amount and play with the curve settings. We are creating snow in the fur. Woo! Awesome! Delete some of it and put a remesh modifier to simplify. Bet you've never seen something like this done before. Haha! <laughs> when done, you can just slap it into an environment, bring in some friends, render to Photoshop, put in some snow, and boom! And then we ended up with this. This took about five hours from start to end. So imagine what you could do with some effort and more time put in. If you're interested in seeing the full process, get access to the Photoshop file and the blend file, you can check it out over on Gumroad along with some of our other courses. Well, that's pretty much it for now. Thanks for watching and see you in the next one.